the gross anatomical features of the heart. Now, when we study the heart, we study them as the external features and internal features. Now, heart is a wedge-shaped organ which lies in the middle mediastinum. Let us first see the morphological features and then understand how does it lie in the body. Now, heart has an apex. When we talk of surfaces, it has got three surfaces. This is the anterior or the sternocostal surface. Then it has got a left lateral surface and it has got a posterior surface or the base and also the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface on which it rests. And we talk of borders, there is a small superior border, a sharp well demarcated inferior border, a right border and a left border. So now with this orientation, let us see how to hold the heart in the normal anatomical position. Heart is directed towards the left side. So this apex of the heart lies in the left orientation. So when we hold it, the apex should lie between the index finger and the outstretched thumb. And the inferior of the diaphragmatic surface should rest on the palm. And when you see the great vessels, they should be in the correct orientation. So this is how you hold the heart in the normal anatomical position. Apex between the index finger and the outstretched thumb. And the diaphragmatic surface resting on the palm. And the great vessels in the correct orientation. So that's the normal anatomical position of the heart. Now we see other gross anatomical features that is the apex, the inferior surface or the diaphragmatic surface, the posterior surface or the base of the heart and two other surfaces that is the sternocostal surface and the left lateral surface. Let us first identify the chambers of the heart and then we will see which chamber contributes to which surface of the heart. Now starting from here. What we see here is the superior vena cava. This here is the right auricle and the right atrium. And inferiorly, we see the opening of the inferior vena cava. The next chamber which we see here is the right ventricle. And when you trace it above, we see the origin of the pulmonary trunk dividing into the right and the left pulmonary arteries. Next we see here part of the left ventricle and when we turn it posteriorly on the posterior surface or the base we see the left atrium. We now go on to see the great vessels. We have already identified here the superior vena cava which opens into the right atrium. The inferior vena cava which drains into the right atrium. The arch of aorta ascending arch and then continuing as a descending thoracic aorta, the pulmonary trunk dividing into right and left pulmonary arteries and when we see the base and we identify this as the left atrium, we see the four pulmonary veins draining into the left atrium. So those are the great vessels. Now we see the various surfaces, sternocostal surface contributed to by the right auricle, right atrium, right ventricle and some part near the apex by the left ventricle. And two grooves seen here, this is the right coronary sulcus or the right atrioventricular groove and this here is the anterior interventricular groove. What structures lie in these grooves? The right coronary sulcus or the right atrioventricular groove shows the presence of the right coronary artery whereas the anterior interventricular groove shows the presence of the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery accompanied by the great cardiac vein. We then move on to see the left lateral surface. This is formed by a part of the left auricle and majorly by the left ventricle ending at the apex. Let us then move on to the inferior or the diaphragmatic surface. 
contributed to by only the two ventricles major component two third of the part by the left ventricle and small part one third by the right ventricle and one groove seen here is the posterior interventricular groove wherein lies the posterior interventricular branch of the right coronary artery accompanied by the middle cardiac vein we then move on to study the posterior surface or the base of the heart which is formed by the left atrium and the four pulmonary veins we then move on to see the right border of the heart which is formed by the superior vena cava the groove here which is seen on the right atrium running down up to the terminal part of the inferior vena cava this groove is the sulcus terminalis so this forms the right border of the heart and the last one is the superior border of the heart which is seen at the upper end of these chambers so that is the external features of the heart and the great vessels let us just look at the great vessels once more superior vena cava the ascending aorta arch of aorta with its three branches are seen here the brachiocephalic trunk which then gives rise to the right common carotid and right subclavian arteries the left common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery and we also see here the pulmonary trunk dividing into the left and the right pulmonary arteries